Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning. We welcome everyone who's with us today for Mass here at the National Shrine of St. Therese, and also all those who might be uh, joining us online uh, to celebrate the Eucharist with us today. Today we celebrate the feast, the great solemnity of the Nativity of John the Baptist. Now, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who raised up St. John the Baptist to make ready a nation fit for Christ the Lord, Give your people, we pray, the grace of spiritual joys, and direct the hearts of all the faithful into the way of salvation and peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O coastlands. Listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth. From my mother's womb, he gave me my name. He made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me, Israel, through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain, and for nothing uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord, my recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him, and Israel gathered to him. And I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. O oh Lord, you have probed me. You know me. You know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize. With all my ways you are familiar. I praise you, Lord, I'm wonderfully made. Truly, you have formed my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks that I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. I praise you, for I'm wonderfully made. My soul also you knew full well, nor was my frame unknown to you. When I was made in secret, when I was fashioned in the depths of the earth. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Paul said, God raised up David as king. Of him, God testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. My brothers, sons of the family of Abraham, and those others among you who are God-fearing, to us this word of salvation has been sent. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Hallelujah. Your child will be called prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they are going to call him Zachariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, No, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is no one among your relatives who has that name. So they made signs, asking his father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name. And all were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened, his tongue freed, and he spoke, blessing God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the desert until the day of his manifestation to Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, today we have this solemnity, and that's the highest rank of any of the feasts in the church. We have solemnities and feasts and memorials and optional memorials, but this is the top of the list. And when we think about uh, the church's calendar, there's only three people who we have a liturgical celebration for their birthday. Uh, obviously, Jesus on the 25th of December, Mary on September 8th, and today, John the Baptist on the 24th of June. 
And we know that the church set the date for Jesus' birthday in the Northern Hemisphere because at that point in December, the days are just starting to get longer. It's like the darkness that settles on us here is beginning to change as the days get longer. And so the church set that date, uh, not because we knew uh, what the birth certificate of Jesus said on the actual date he was born, but we would celebrate it at that time of the year, the 25th of December. And then everything else seems to fall in line with that particular date. Uh, we celebrate the Annunciation of the Lord nine months before uh, the birth of Jesus on the 25th of March. And if you remember that gospel story where the angel Gabriel comes to Mary, says, uh, uh, as if Mary didn't have enough to deal with as she has conceived Jesus into her womb, you know, your kinswoman Elizabeth uh, is also pregnant, and uh, she who was so old that nobody thought she was capable of having a baby, she's six months pregnant. And then we hear the story how Mary goes in haste to the hill country of Judea and uh, to be with Elizabeth until three months later, here on the 24th of June, we celebrate the birthday of John the Baptist. St. Augustine said that uh, at the time of Jesus' birth, the days are getting longer in the Northern Hemisphere, Believe it or not, the days are getting just a little bit shorter at this time in June. And it was John who said to Jesus, he must increase while I must decrease. So he said, it's a good time to be celebrating this particular celebration. Anyway, we hear in the story today, if we, if we back up to the first chapter of Luke's gospel, that Zechariah, who's a priest, is in the temple, and the angel Gabriel comes to him and says, you and Elizabeth, uh, you're going to have a child. And uh, Zachariah says, well, we haven't had one yet, and we're pretty old. It doesn't seem too likely. And because he doubted, according to uh, scripture scholars interpret that scene, he was struck dumb until the birth of John the Baptist. So in this story, that's why he can't talk. They ask for a tablet. So the time came. Uh, Elizabeth and Zachariah had their baby. According to Jewish ritual, it's eight days. They're going to circumcise the boy and also give him his name. And so when it comes to the name, it says they were going to call, the relatives, they're going to call him Zachariah after his father. Why not? He could be Zachariah Jr. They waited so long for the baby. But Elizabeth says, no, his name will be called John because that's what the angel Gabriel told Zachariah. His name will be John. But... Elizabeth's just the mother. Why should she be having any right in this say-so here? So they didn't agree with her. They said, well, no one among your relatives has this name. Well, there's a long tradition we would name somebody after someone in the family, but some of the babies I've baptized, nobody on the face of the earth has had that name, right? So this is a, a unique name. But they said, no, his name will be John. So, well, you're the mother. We can't pay attention to you. We'll ask the dad. And then when Zechariah writes on the tablet, his name will be John, and he fulfills what the Lord asked him to do, his tongue is open and he can speak. And then everybody in the hill country of Judea, they're talking about it, and they're wondering, well, Who's this child going to be? All these things taking place as this child is born into the world. And of course, we know Jesus said there was no one greater born of a woman uh, than John the Baptist. As we reflect on this today, though, we might reflect on the fact of the babies that are born into our families and the joy of that new child coming into the world. And uh, we all probably step back and say, what will this child be? I remember when uh, my brother Tim and his wife had their first child, a little baby boy named Brendan, and uh, we, I went with my mother and dad, took them to visit from our home in Kansas to Indiana. The expression on the face of my parents as they saw this grandchild was like something out of a Hallmark Christmas card. The joy that comes in a family when there's a new baby born. I think that experience of look what we've done, but look what God has done. And it reminds us that every baby born on the face of the earth, no matter what the situation, is loved by God and has a precious, precious place in God's kingdom. So let's please stand, and as today is a solemnity, the church asks us to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us present our petitions before the Lord. We pray today for our church throughout the world. We pray especially for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, uh, for God's blessings on him and for all of our bishops. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for peace within our country and throughout the world and also for the gift of justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord pray for all the benefactors of our Carmelite order who allow us to do our many ministries throughout the world and particularly for the members of the Society of the Little Flower, we pray to the Lord. Lord On this feast of John the Baptist, we pray that all babies being born into the world will be received into homes of love. We pray to the Lord. Lord and finally, let's pray for all our beloved dead, for those members of our family and friends and communities who've gone before us, uh, for God's blessings on them and the kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, we offer these prayers and all those special intentions we hold close to our hearts, and we make them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place these offerings on your altar, O Lord, to celebrate with fitting honor the nativity of him who both foretold the coming of the world's Savior and pointed him out when he came, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In his precursor, St. John the Baptist, we praise your great glory, 
For you consecrated him for a singular honor among those born of women. His birth brought great rejoicing. Even in the womb he leapt for joy at the coming of human salvation. He alone of all the prophets pointed out the Lamb of Redemption. And to make holy the flowing waters, he baptized the very author of baptism. It was a privilege to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his blood. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, bred throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. John the Baptist, with the Blessed Apostles, with Joseph, the Blessed Spouse of Mary, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. 
Having feasted at the banquet of the heavenly Lamb, we pray, O Lord, the finding joy in the nativity of St. John the Baptist, your church may know as the author of her rebirth, the Christ, whose coming John foretold, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let's offer a Hail Mary to our Blessed Mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Everyone have a good day. God bless you.